Yes, you must have a load on this. A spark gap may work, should work by itself if you keep the gap close enough. If you get too far, especially on this, those caps will arc. I've blown out the diodes already. Not these, I've blown out four, two pairs already. Until I put on you got a spark gap across here, set it about 60 thousandths. Uh, just a piece of wire running from one terminal to another one, set it about 60 thousandths away just in case. Because experimenting around, if something gets connected, if you open this your spark gap up too much, is these caps here cannot they're they'll arc and it's quite a dumping of energy the what else yeah this is a thousand to one probe still floating around 600 it'll get up to 24.5 kilohertz but yes I have a uh, the heat sinks on the transformer the FET and I drilled holes in the bottom and up here it doesn't generate much heat but it does generate enough heat so that's why I wanted to vent the thing can't even see them there's some of the holes anyway what else? Mm, 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 mm. Yes, the heater. Here's the heater. I put a heat. This is aluminum. Put it wrapped around it. This heater, it's a 110 volt, 250 watt heater of some sort. I think it's a water heater of, for something. Uh, I can get it up to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's with about a 62 degree outside temperature. So I, I, it got a little too warm for me that I could uh, want, that I felt comfortable with. Yeah, 250 watts. But anyway, I wrapped the heat sink around it just to play it safe with that. And yes, did I show the bulb? This is what the flash the light is here 66.45 ohms is what it measures 0.6 amp 1.6 amp it's a 20 watt 120 volt this here measures 28 ohms I believe uh, oh 68 ohms this measures 68 ohms the bulb measures 66.5 has no problem with this 120 volt it's no problem with that what is weird is if I put run a 12 volt bulb on this an automotive bulb uh, it will light it about like this in fact I will try that I'll be back okay this is a 12 volt automotive bulb this is the low beam it's a dual filament there's a high and a low this is as bright as I can get it it'll start arcing otherwise but this now this is what is weird about this system I've got a 120 volt 20 watt I can practically burn out if I turn this system up Here's a 12 volt bulb. I can just light the low filament up. It won't even try to light the high up. It'll take too much. But if I crank it up a little more, there's the arcing inside. So there's still an awful lot of high voltage going through this at a high frequency. So you gotta watch what you connect to this. These are resistive loads. This is really it's it's if you hook a six volt battery up to this twelve volt bulb, 
this is probably what you'll see it's really not that bright so that's the story what we've got still we're at 22 kilohertz 360 volts and that's with that load on it and this here is just connecting to the top if I pull the iron out this will drop not much but it will drop mm -hmm. so I've got them in there it might be helping it it may not be I don't know it's not if I add put my hand around there up I grab it well yeah make a liar out of me it usually goes up so anyway that's the story 400 volts yeah there's still 20 this whole system is running at 23 kilohertz see it's trying to arc again that's how I lost some of my bulbs so yeah there's still a ways to go before this thing can even run a 12 volt even charge a 12 volt battery as there's still 300 400 volts going into this yeah going through that spark gap uh, yeah there's still 300 something volts going in there 300 volts at a low current and after going through that resistive load this is what you get under a 12 volt system so that's about all I can tell you right now Smithsonian got that from Kmart it's arcing again see that it's trying to arc through there You've got to watch that. It's best if you inspect the system. You may want to go to a 120, 220 volt bulbs and keep your spark low until you get it under control. Now this is just a demonstration of what can be done with a single globe, plasma globe. You can see the separation in there of what he was talking about the chenko but yeah the uh, separated lines inside of there around the ferrites that seems to be what he might be talking about the separation of the magnetic field and the electric fields I'm guessing but the uh, more I add on to this with the iron and the uh, toroids, these are out of old television sets. I decided to keep the windings on them just for the heck of it because they may come in handy. With this high frequency, you need, should have a smaller winding if you want to get them uh, to pick up the full current. Uh, 22 gauge is about the bottom limit, I believe for uh, 22 kilohertz if you go any lower the current the uh, frequency the current starts running on the outside of the wire and you end up with jumping and arcing I do believe it just it doesn't penetrate it doesn't stay in one spot so I decided to leave that on there because I would be dealing with a higher frequencies I don't know what the bottom limit on this is. Maybe 40 kilohertz, 50, I don't know. Anyway, that's, uh, see, I can take that back, this out of here. Yes, the more you add to it, you'll see the streamers, the normal streamers in there. 
Now those streamers, the more they dissipate into its surroundings, to the toroids and the like, the higher the current it pulls, the better the output. And there it goes again. So. thing really gets out of hand so yeah that might be what Melichenko he seems to have a handle on it but Don Smith says uh, you can use these these work very well it really doesn't generate that much heat you could run this thing off a good 12 volt battery is getting the battery charged back up. But uh, right now I seem to be, the efficiency of the system seems to be about 90%. Uh, the running this bulb at a uh, xenon bulb takes 0.16 amp at 120 volts this will run 12 volts at 1.7 one it'll run at 1.6 amps I took all the accessories off there but it's it's about the same you times 10 divided by 10 120 volts 0 0.16 0 0.17 amps so about what's going in is coming back out the wider I spread that gap the less current it will draw the more pulsing I'll get but they're stronger and higher voltage and higher current pulses so I think I'm it's about break even on this thing if not 80 or 90 percent so that's where we're at 